Why wasn't I debriefed on this? Because we didn't debrief you on Bigfoot either. Wait, what? Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Colton Ogburn, and these are all the Easter eggs, references, and little things you might have missed in Season 2, Episode 5 of What If. And man, was this episode a lot of fun. We got the return of Captain Peggy Carter, but not just any Captain Carter, the same Captain Carter from What If Season 1, the Captain Carter that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Infinity Ultron alongside the Guardians of the Multiverse. And a little later, we'll explain that ending in the exact Marvel Comics universe Peggy has found herself in. So we open with the Battle of New York, which in the mainline MCU took place in the first Avengers movie, only in this universe we've got Peggy Carter in the place of Captain America. On this alternate Avengers team are some OGs like Black Widow, Hawkeye, Iron Man, and Thor, but taking the place of Hulk in this six hero lineup is none other than the Wasp, who was actually supposed to be in this first Avengers movie, but Kevin Feige asked Joss Whedon to replace the Wasp character with Black Widow. Here we got a great callback to Steve Rogers instructing the Avengers on how to battle the Chitauri, and then we even got this awesome recreation of the scene where Cap boosted Black Widow into the air with his shield. Let's go for a ride. I like it. Now catching back up with the Watcher, we can see him repairing the broken shards in the Nexus of All Realities from when Infinity Ultron broke the barrier in the Season 1 finale. Oh no. I found you. In these shards of glass, we can see Loki, Thanos, The Collector, Doctor Strange, Tony Stark, and Ant-Man. Here we see a flashback to the What If Season 1 premiere when we first met this variant of Peggy Carter, and then we see the lineup of the Guardians of the Multiverse when they assembled to battle Infinity Ultron. Now here in Washington, D.C., we see Black Widow jogging, and then she is picked up by Peggy in a car. This is a recreation of this scene in Captain America the Winter Soldier when it is Natasha who is picking up Steve Rogers from his jog. Hey fellas, either one of you know where the Smithsonian is? I'm here to pick up a fossil. We see Captain Carter and Black Widow go on a mission on a boat, just like in the opening of Captain America and the Winter Soldier, when Black Widow and Captain America embarked on a mission on a boat. Only this time they are in search of the Hydra Stomper. Steve. Hey, uh, man in a box, you got any New Year's resolutions? Nope. None? Nope, none. I mean, I used to have this real problem with stress eating, but then I quit. Oh, how? Well, I kicked my battle roll fixation habits by using Fume. They're the sponsor of this video. Oh, is that a vape? It's not a vape, it's not electronic, and it's not filled with pods with potentially harmful chemicals. Instead, it has these plant-based cores that are infused with natural flavors to create natural flavored air. I recently started sparkling grapefruit, and it even freshens my breath. It smells very nice. Thank you, thank you. And see, Fume uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one. There's a new year coming up and we all have our resolutions. So if yours is to finally quit your bad habit, then Fume is here to help. Plus it has this awesome adjustable airflow and it's designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting and giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for calming your anxiety. Fume makes switching easy and even fun. They have thousands of reviews for more than 150,000 customers who have used Fume to change their lives. So head to tryfume.com slash screen crush and use code screen crush to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. The journey pack comes with three unique flavors and everything you need to finally be free of your bad habit. Plus, you can upgrade your journey pack with Fume Solano. This includes a premium walnut barrel and an onyx black coated mouthpiece that has a smooth finish. So that's tryfum.com and use code screencrush to save an additional 10% off your order today. Now, back to what I was saying. So in the first episode of What If Season 1, we got a Steve Rogers who never got the Super Soldier Serum, but Howard Stark, Tony Stark's dad, made Steve Rogers an Iron Man-like suit called the Hydra Stomper. Stark made me some new dancing shoes. What do you think? Okay, so in the season one finale of What If, when Peggy is taken by the Watcher to come help fight Infinity Ultron, we see her taken from this mission on the boat. So the stuff we're seeing here with Peggy and Black Widow in the car, that is prior to the mission that we see her go on in the season one finale and prior to her being taken, of course, by the Watcher. And at the end of the season one finale, we see Peggy return to the exact moment in time she was taken from. Too fast. Don't tell me he was your type. We then go on to see the exact same scene pan out that we saw in this episode of season two. Same dialogue and everything. Black Widow showing Peggy the storage container holding not only the Hydra Stomper, but Steve Rogers. Oh, Steve. 
So in case I lost you, in between this scene and this scene, Peggy went with the Watcher to fight Infinity Ultron. So we find out that all these years later, Steve Rogers is still alive. And it's cool to know that even in a universe where Steve Rogers didn't become Captain America and get frozen in ice, he was still destined to find his way to the future. Now here we see Peggy having it out with Nick Fury over him not being completely honest with her. A very similar fight we have seen take place between Steve Rogers and Nick Fury. Which you didn't feel obliged to share. I'm not obliged to do anything. In this alternate universe where Steve Rogers didn't get trapped in the ice, we learn that he and Bucky formed a two-man army where they traveled the globe taking down Hydra bases. And guys, that is a what-if episode I need to see. When Fury reveals that Steve and the Hydra Stomper are accused of terrorism, Black Widow chimes in that it could be the Red Room manipulating his mind. What if the Red Room was in control? The Red Room is the Black Widow program that Natasha was under that we saw a lot of in the Black Widow movie. They manipulated the minds of their soldiers and made them obedient to their every command. Steve Rogers that you loved died in 1953. That thing, it's not human. Here we learn that Bucky Barnes has gone on to become S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Mr. Secretary, which in the mainline MCU is the Hydra sympathizer Alexander Pierce. Here we also see the on-screen counsel from Winter Soldier, and then in comes Brock Rumlow and his Hydra lackeys who we met in Winter Soldier and who popped up again in Avengers Endgame. Brock also went on to become the Marvel Comics villain Crossbones in Captain America's Civil War. I think I look pretty good, all things considered. So when Steve attacks S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters and we see Bucky step in front of the guns aimed at Steve, we hear Bucky say, He would be stupid enough to do the same for me. And we of course know that in another universe, Steve did do this for Bucky. In the main MCU, it's Bucky Barnes who found himself under Russian mind control and who needed his best friend to step in and save him. Here we see Steve and Peggy busting through multiple ceilings, just like how in Winter Soldier we saw Steve Rogers busting through lots of walls pursuing Bucky. Tell him I'm in pursuit. When we see Steve begin to free fall, it reminded me a lot of when Rhodey was hit by Vision's beam and he began to free fall in Captain America's Civil War. Luckily for Steve though, he was caught before hitting the ground, unlike Rhodey who went, boom. You looking for this? Nat and Peggy take Steve to St. Kilda, which is apparently a very isolated island in Scotland. I'm guessing this is one of Black Widow's planned hiding spots for in case she ever found herself on the run, just like we saw in her movie after she was on the run following the events of Civil War. Now, while it was the ice and the super soldier serum that kept Steve Rogers young in the main MCU, we learned that in this universe, it was apparently the Hydra Stomper suit. Next, we got a reference to Avengers Age of Ultron when Peggy says she doesn't want to let Tony Tony and Bruce play mad scientist to fix Steve. This is fitting because in Avengers Age of Ultron, Steve was very hesitant about leaving Bruce and Tony alone to meddle with things, and rightfully so because it gave us Ultron. I'm sorry, I know you mean well. You just didn't think it through. Next, we learn that Peggy Carter has likely had a list of her own things that she needed to catch up on after missing so much time, just like Steve Rogers had in Winter Soldier. I figure that's the case because it sounds like she recently became a Star Wars fan with her reference to Carbonite. Best case scenario, he winds up stuck in some prison frozen in Carbonite. Wow, so that's how you spend your Saturday nights. Star Wars, by the way, was also on Steve Rogers' list. In this universe, we learn that Natasha has already killed the leader of the Red Room, Dracov, whereas in the mainline MCU, he's still alive post-Civil War. When Steve comes to, we hear him say, I owe you that date. This is a callback not only to Steve Rogers owing Peggy Carter a date in the main MCU, but this Peggy Carter owing this Steve Rogers a date in their universe. You owe me a dance lesson. Yes. Saturday night. And here we can see the same type of jet that Black Widow flew in the first Avengers movie. Agent Romanoff. You miss me? Next, we hear mention of a Sokovian military base. This is, of course, prior to what happened to Sokovia in Avengers Age of Ultron, where the country is ultimately destroyed. And apparently, Hawkeye likes Dad Rock. Me too. Look at this photograph. In Sokovia, we see that they have assembled their very own Doomtown. Or as I like to call it, Boomtown. Special milk delivery! So during the Cold War era, the US military built these fake towns in Nevada to see how bad a nuclear attack would affect the population. We had a great look at one of these towns in Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. Well, that can't be good. Now, here we heard mention of the multiversal space squid that Captain Carter fought in the season one premiere of What If? I feel like I'm in a horror movie. And we once fought a giant space squid. I love this line here about Steve and Peggy having time, something that in every universe they seem to never have enough of. We have a little time. 
That's a first. We can also hear in this scene the music Steve and Peggy dance to at the end of Avengers Endgame. Faster. Cars, computers, even the news moves fast. Now here we can see the Widows using Widow Bites, something that we've actually seen Black Widow use many times before in the MCU, such as here in Captain America's Civil War. Here we can see the Red Room high in the sky, just like we saw in the Black Widow movie. And then enters Black Widow's adoptive mother, Milena. I don't want to fight in front of my mom. Mom? Ish. Now we first met Milena in the Black Widow solo film, but in that movie she betrays the Red Room and helps her daughters bring it down. But in this universe, she's still loyal to the Red Room. I was proud of you. You were a very successful killing machine. But then you became an Avenger. Here we see Peggy called Margaret. You are Captain Margaret Carter. Which is actually her legal name. Peggy's just a nickname. Next we learn that they made a movie about Captain Carter that was actually a musical. This is a callback to Rogers the Musical that we saw in Hawkeye and on this billboard here in Spider-Man No Way Home. I can do this all. Here the Widows are jumping into action, looking a lot like the side profile shot we got of the Avengers in Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, when Steve seemingly goes to sacrifice himself to fly into the Red Room ship and destroy it, I got real Iron Giant vibes. And that actually wasn't the only time I got Iron Giant vibes in this episode. When Steve and the Hydra Stomper would lose control, their eyes would turn red, just like when the Iron Giant would lose control of his mind and go into kill mode. <laughs> And then as the episode wraps up, we think we're getting a tease for another Peggy Carter sequel where she'll go looking for Steve, but instead we see her portaled into another universe by the Scarlet Witch. So there's a lot to break down here. The Watcher is supposed to know all, yet even he is caught off guard. See all. I observe all. I know. What the hell is this? The Watcher being caught off guard could be a sign that reality as he knows it is changing, perhaps a clue at something being afoot in the Marvel multiverse, and teasing what's to come next with the multiverse saga and the god at the end of time, Loki. And here's another thing we don't want to overlook. How the hell did Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, teleport Peggy to another universe? I mean, in Multiverse of Madness, Wanda had to consult the Darkhold just to transfer her essence via dreamwalking to another reality where she possessed her own variant's body. And for her to physically travel to another universe, she needed the powers of America Chavez. So I'm wondering if in this universe, Wanda succeeded in taking America's powers, because it would appear here that Wanda does have the ability to create multiversal portals. Now, I'm not saying necessarily that she killed America and took her powers. I wouldn't be surprised if she had this power all along and just didn't know it. Seeing as how in WandaVision she was able to conjure into existence replicas of her children that existed in another universe. So this could be a hint that Wanda is actually even more powerful than she knew. Okay, so now let's talk about where the hell Peggy went and why Nick Fury is talking like this. That is she. The one who can save our queen. This is a medieval universe. In the comics, it's called Universe 398, a reality that was altered by a character called Morgan Le Fay, a dark sorceress from the Marvel comics. In this universe, there was a reality warp that changed everyone and everything to a medieval setting, which changed the way that everyone spoke and how everyone dressed. It's a lot like how Wanda's hex affected everyone in WandaVision. Don't shoot, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> Now, this hex cast by Morgan made all the Avengers believe that they were part of the Queen's Guard. And here in this scene, we hear Fury mention their Queen. The one who can save our Queen. In the comics, this guard is known as the Queen's Vengeance, and the Queen they're serving is Morgan Le Fay. Now, in these comics, the Scarlet Witch was locked away in a dungeon because her powers were able to cancel out Morgan's. But it would appear that in this reality, Wanda is also working for the Queen. Or maybe she's playing some 3D chess and she's actually trying to overthrow the queen and reset their reality. After all, we do hear her say that Captain Carter might be able to help them save their world. In the comics, from her dungeon, Wanda attempts to contact any Avenger she can to help, and she is able to break through Morgan's spell and snap Captain America out of his trance. So, in this universe, it could be that Captain Carter is once again taking the place of Captain America and coming to save the day. So, this is almost certainly teasing an upcoming episode of this season, and I am so excited to 
to see what they do with the medieval Avengers storyline in this show. Oh, and before we go, I just want to say that I love how this Peggy is aware of the Watcher and starts calling out for him. Nice touch. Watcher! Watcher! And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, it actually makes sense that the Watcher wouldn't recognize this universe because, like in the comics, it's likely that this universe has been manipulated via Hex into an unrecognizable medieval era. So there are all the Easter eggs I caught for this episode. Let me know if I missed any down in the comments below or you can at me on Twitter. If it's your first time here, be sure to subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Colton Ogburn. Thank you.